Last week, Milan San Remo was won with a dropper post. But it's a road race. A dropper post is a mountain bike thing, isn't it? So a dropper post is a seat post that drops. And most of them look a bit like this. This is an externally routed Koryak, I think it's called, by Pro. And basically you put this in your bike, you connect a cable from this part here all the way to your handlebars. And then when you press the lever and you're sitting on the saddle, your weight pushes it down. There's usually an air spring inside these. They're pretty reliable. You can get different amounts of drop. So this one's actually quite short. I think it's like 100 mil. Whereas ones that you'd get on like enduro mountain bikes would be twice as much as this. So you can get your saddle really low. The benefits of getting your saddle lower is a lower center of gravity. And a lower center of gravity means you've got more control. You can move your weight around a bit better on the bike without the saddle getting in the way. And you can get your weight back without having to go behind the saddle when you're descending, which means there's no weight in your front wheel and then you don't have as much control. So in the mountain bike world and off-road cycling world, these have become very popular. You very rarely, however, see these used on a road bike. But in recent times, we've been seeing them used on road bikes in an aid to get more aerodynamic when you're going down descents. Now, until recently, it was legal to do what is called the super tuck on Zwift. So essentially sitting on your top tube in as much of an aerodynamic position as you can possibly get in, which means you're not sat in the saddle at all. And the UCI, the governing body that dictate all of the rules around pro cycling currently banned it because essentially people were trying to copy it, copy what the pros were doing because it came increasingly popular in road races and they, I guess, thought people were gonna have accidents. So the latest example of this was in Milan San Remo last week but it has been done before. I remember spotting this photo years ago, which I think is of Ivan Basso's bike, and he was using a pretty funky looking dropper post all the way back then. Now I found this photo in an article which was actually from 2011, which I'll uh, link down below. So it really was quite a while ago riders started using it. I don't know if the Super Tuck was that popular back then though. Now I think I've only got two examples of dropper posts here in the studio, but Backyard Bike Shop, has a lot more. So let's go over there. Do you want to see the beauty of titanium? The beauty of titanium? Yes. yes. My bag has completely scratched my frame. And with the help of the miracle sauce from G85, or kitchen sponge, Bit of elbow grease. Obviously, I have to put a disclaimer in here do not do this on a painted frame <laughs> or an alloy frame or a steel frame because you will sorely regret it. Bit of wiping. Look at that! <laughs> it's actually like new. Almost as good as new. And that, kids, is why you want titanium. I guess you could work on it for even longer and get it like back to. Oh, new. yeah, you mean you can get like. They're, they're actually, Jay Gim makes a Scotch Bright. Um, which is the exact same grain as what they use to get the finish. But I mean, like... You'd have to go finer and yeah, finer yeah, with it. Yeah, it adds one. character. And, I mean, that's much easier to get. Kitchen. High tech. So here's someone a lot more qualified than me to talk about dropper posts. Because Nick claims... We had an argument about this. He claims he was the first person in the world to do dropper posts on road bikes. <laughs> it's a lie. It's just a lie. That's the first one I saw, so obviously that has to be true. The first one I saw was Even Basso when they were riding for liquid gas. It might have been Nibali. It, anyway, I think the liquid gas team were the first ones to do it years ago. And they're on their green Cannondales and they had dropper posts. Where do you think you Ugly dropper it? posts. Oh. What do you mean? I'll send you the proof, you know what I mean? Like, I told him about it, it's 2014. You don't know even Basso. I'll give you some proof later. <laughs> it does work though. I've been running it on my road bike for quite a bit, um, and it's just nice, because the Super Tuck obviously has been banned. But by Not for you! Up, it's been banned for people who are in UCI races. It's much safer to do with the dropper post. I will agree um, with that, yeah. And, yeah. Um, if I was to go, I mean, the extra weight, it adds quite a bit of weight, but if I was to go on a holiday to the Alps or somewhere like that, Definitely, I wouldn't go with that. It'll be post. fun. Yeah, yeah. What's that one? Wireless. So, dropper posts, the biggest problem with them is it's a massive fuck on trying to fit one because you have to route all the cables through the cable stretch. Some of them are hydraulic. You have to get drop bar levers because the mountain bike levers work quite well, but it's a completely different lever for your road bikes. Where SRAM's invented the wireless dropper. Excessive. So, 
ex excessive price, yeah, I mean, excessive looks. On... But it's this cool. It's is... cool though. I'm not. I'm not denying it's not cool. Seven hundred and fifty quid. Um, <laughs> they've released what? a new one that fits in all bikes, twenty-seven point two as well, which is five hundred pounds. Um, Bargain. But it's just ease of use. Also. Because I run SRAM RAID, got a spare battery on the dropper post. A few times my actual shifters, I forgot to charge them. Rear max died. Take the battery out of my dropper, stick it on there. Jobs are good. In. But to show you how easy it is to swap. How do you make it work? Just to clarify, this is the premium, the most premium option are the RockShox ones, which are wireless and really expensive. I think the cheaper one is £500, and that's the one that doesn't come with a remote, uh, which you can use with an existing like SRAM system, so you can, because it's all wireless, isn't it? The mountain bike one is more expensive because it comes with a dedicated lever, because when you've got mountain bike handlebars, it's not the same like system for changing it. But the 500 one quid one is nicer. Is it? Explore version. What they've done is obviously it can fit into normal road bikes because it's 27.2. But also, if you were to drop the, you can stop it at any point. So you can change the saddle height if you wanted to. But if you drop it by a couple of millimeters and stop it over there, it uh, acts as active suspension. So when you hit bumps and things like that, the actual saddle will go up and down. This does, one doesn't do it. No. Does that one let you drop it halfway though? Uh, yes, because that's yes, quite it still important. Does, but it doesn't have the suspension when you've dropped it. So with the 500 quid, the Explore range, which is made for gravel, um, if you do that one and you drop it a tiniest little bit, um, after that you've got a bit of suspension. So it acts like a suspension seat post as well. There are tons of other options on the market, like the KS or Kind Shock. One that I bought was 150 pounds, and that actually weighs the same. There's this RockShox one, but it does have a cable, so you have to route it all through your frame. And it doesn't look as nice, and it's not like but it's a nice cheap. feeling, but it is a lot cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. You can get one of them with the lever for drop bars from about 150 quid. Yeah, it's just like a thumb lever. It works really well. That's a decent um, price. Mark and Lucas and all of them riding with us, they all have the KS version. Um, yeah, it's good. I mean, we haven't had any issues. You can go slightly more premium. I've got a carbon KS one, which is a little bit more expensive on my mountain bike at the moment, uh, which is the one you saw in the clips this morning. And if you want to go even cheaper, I think Brand X, which is Planet X's brand. Do they own it? I don't know. Brand X, anyway. They're the, they seem to be the cheapest option, and they're about 100 quid online at the moment. So if you wanted to experiment with a dropper. Maybe check with your bike shop first in terms of the cable routing and everything. You can get external ones, which I guess you could just like tape the cable on uh, if you were really stuck. You get one. I've got one of those. You've got ones where there's just a lever underneath your saddle. Oh yeah. You just reach back and drop it like that. That's probably the easiest because the flip side to it. That's genius. That's is that's really good. Some bikes are routing. It's going to cost you more money. Than what the actual extra bit for the seatbelt is going to cost. Well, the labour. So start taking your handlebar tape off. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. internally routed. Yeah, it just becomes a bit of a nightmare. What brand make the ones where you can adjust it with the side? KS has got one. Really? They've one. Quite a few has done it over the years. Um, usually that's the cheapest seatbelt to make. The original dropper post used to work like that, just a lever. And the most accessible, big time. Yeah. I have a few times when I've lent somebody my bike on a ride or switched bikes and it's been slightly shorter or if somebody test rides my bike around here which has worked quite well because all the it's just the shop we just drop it slightly to their saddle height. The Shimano service bikes at big races have droppers on yes. because then you could the riders can just lower them just a tiny bit to get close enough to their own saddle height and that's how Jimmy rides my mountain bike when we go riding together. Why did they ban the super tuck in the first place? Was that a safety thing because yes. people were going to copy it? Yeah. Right so this is the perfect solution in terms of like I think for most people it, it is a little bit sketchy descending on your top tube in the in the super tuck. Like, I get that not everybody can feel comfortable at speed doing that. So the dropper's a cool way to achieve it. Yeah. And it, it's a dropper. Dropper. <laughs> now it kind of makes sense for professionals to use this kind of thing because their bikes are already hitting the UCI weight limit of 6.8 or 6.9 kilos anyway. So a bit of extra weight from a dropper is sometimes needed. And there has been proof that getting into that position on your top tube or slightly lower down in the saddle uh, is faster than seated at a normal height and tucking like that anyway. Does it make sense for non-professionals though? I would say do whatever you want. If you enjoy descending and you enjoy going fast and a lower center of gravity means you can have more fun doing it, then absolutely. How long will it be though until companies start releasing super light road bike droppers that are 500 pounds more than the normal ones probably quite soon.